Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Vampires, and I must congratulate you, Neonate, for the researches you have done into the Gaki, the hungry ghosts of the East, for it almost matches the knowledge that I have on these bizarre spiritualists, and it s certainly surpasses that of the kindred of the East. As discussed previously, they attempted to imitate the Gaki during their infiltration of the Americas, and whilst certainly they did not do a bad job, there are certain skills that the Gaki possess that even the kindred of the East could not quite replicate. This may speak to their origins, but I believe the Gaki, at least by my record, first originated in the 4th century after Christ, or thereabouts. And unlike most bloodlines, there were a couple of clans, maybe even a few, that claimed attribution of their creation. Why? Well, I believe the Gaki to be the linchpin that holds that strange sect of, the, of Eastern Asia together. I'll go into my reasons, but I know of at least one Cappadocian that claimed responsibility for the embrace of the tiger that walks on two legs, as one of the Gaki is or was known, and I know of Ravnos as well, who claims a similar thing for <laughs> another Gaki who shall remain nameless for the time being. Why? How can they claim this, well, mixed heritage? Well, the Gaki are silent as to their origins, but certain clans respect deeply what the Hungry Ghosts are capable of. Bear in mind that when unfed, the Hungry Ghosts resemble not a rotting corpse, but more the uh, shriveled body of a mummy. Uh, not so hideous as the Bushi, let's say, or indeed the Zhangxi when rigged, but certainly unappealing to the eye, and so there are certain resemblances of the Cappadocians, and undoubtedly our clan founder, Cappadocius, Asher, Sargon, calling whatever you like on any given night, wandered greatly, as did Sorlot of the Salubri. But, the tiger that walks on two could be said to resemble a Cappadocian of old, rather than a harbinger or one of the Samdi. Also, they have the gift of concealment, obfuscation. While that is not an inherent gift of the Cappadocians, nor is it a gift of the Ravnos, they carry powers of illusion that outdo any that I have seen, even from the clan of charlatans themselves, the Ravnos of India. They can not only practice this Ravnos art of Shimeastri, but also obfuscation, the Nosferatu and Malkavian purview, which begs many questions. The fortitude that they have on top of that just compounds the matter, makes it seem almost definite that there is a Ravnos connection, but that corpse-like appearance, perhaps it is just something that afflicts the Canites of Asia. Still, I go off the beaten track a little and don't explain to you why exactly they are this linchpin in the East, and my reason for saying so is as follows. There are no clans or bloodlines so spiritual, so in touch with one's beast, so harmonious with one's beast, and able to conceal the horrid truths of their own conditions from themselves as the Gaki. First originating in Tibet, and indeed in Japan as well to some degree, the Gaki fed, preyed upon, and almost exclusively resided within communes of Buddhist monks. Tibet was an area in which they were fairly prolific for a time, but they found themselves into the councils of many of the caliphs and other such titled nobles and canites in that area. Zhang Shi would have them in court, Guo Long would do the same. You would hear of them occasionally prowling around the hordes of the Anda as late as the 11th century. However, the Gaki were known for their wise sage counsel, not again dissimilar to the way Cappadocians counseled the Ventru before the Great Betrayal. The Gaki, well, their gift was in harmony. The path of harmony that several Sabbath follow may well have originated or drawn some of its origins from what the Hungry Ghosts practiced within. They sought meditation,
they sought the company of mortals and surrounded themselves with vast herds, practically small armies. These Gaki were able to not only control their beast, but also speak with it, so the stories say, and make offers and parley with it. I know, this seems <laughs> bizarre to a canine such as yourself, but it is said that they could talk to their own beast and make deals, as one would deal with the devil, let's say, that you will burst free on this given night and you will be able to sup from all of these children, let's say, if I can keep you reined in for the following week during which a war will be taking place and I need not to be distracted by blood, fire or other tempestuous distraction. So, I know not of a discipline that allowed them to do this, and yet I understand that the Gaki were capable, through meditation, through solitude at times, but surrounding themselves by the pumping blood and synchronicity of the heartbeat of their Buddhist allies, they were capable of doing this. They could stave off their beast if, at given times, they completely succumbed to it. They would arrange this outrage. This resulted in most Gaki, in fact, succumbing to the beast and never actually waking up and regaining any semblance of sanity again. Once the beast takes charge, that creature does not like to let go of your body. And yet some Gaki, the wisest ones, and certainly the eldest ones, have shown time and time again that they are not only capable of manipulating, but also healing the beast, as in to put the beast under the heel rather than making it feel any better. The Gaki have since spread. I know that they are as far as Vietnam, I know that there are some in India, and that there are some, indeed, advising in the Ravnos courts there to the south. Think on that for a second. The Gaki are probably the Canaanites I would expect to find most likely in the Americas and Europe, for simply due to their inoffensiveness, but for one reason. There is a reason they're called the Hungry Ghosts. The Gaki do hunger. They are thirsty. Now I've heard that their weakness translates in many ways, and the truth of it is that one Gaki would tell you one thing, another would another, and an informant of another clan would make some other wild leap. And for reasons that I can fully respect, the Hungry Ghosts are, let shall we say, unhappy with going into the details of what makes them weak. Still, I have heard the following, that they need to feed twice as much as a normal vampire in order to regain sustenance. Others state that they are never able to feed from animals, and that from immediately beyond embrace they can only feed off of humans, and that it is not long before they are restricted to feeding from canines as well. Perhaps those herds they surround themselves with are not just mortals, but also child, a shackled, bloodbound, and ready to feed themselves to their sires whenever their sires choose. These hungry ghosts are also known for their penchant for diablerie. See the connection with Clan Atomite here. They greatly ritualise it, and whilst they only commit diablerie within their own clan, as is known, it is said, and that certainly borrows from some salubri myth as well, that they have some grand plan in their clan structure to commit some vast act of diablerie at some point on one of the more established clans on the west for some great effrontery into their territory. I believe this comes quite recent uh, from the Chinese actions in Tibet. While I cannot claim to be familiar with them intensely, the only Canite clan I know was involved in that grand action was the Bruja. Oh, you did not know? The, the Bruja, your Spanish witches, uh, made a familiar accord with the Kui Jin in China in the, uh, well, 20th century. You did not know this? Why? Well, that is interesting. Not many, not many at all, and it would be unfair to say the Bruja have much of a clan structure to allow them all uh, equanimity within China, but they laid the groundwork for Tibet being largely snatched by the Kui Jin from the realms of the Gaki. The Gaki now largely housed in Vietnam and Japan, and the island kingdoms surrounding Southeast Asia they apparently reserved this great desire 
to diabolize a number of the elders of Clan Bruhar to the point that they are cataloguing mentally, I'm sure they would not be so vulgar as to note it down, the locations of various Bruhar Methuselah, so that they can fall upon them and visit upon them a great retribution. You steal my homeland, I'll steal your ancestry. It is easy to think of them as wise old masters, skilled in the martial arts as well as the meditative art, but think of them also as this. The Knights of the East trust the Gaki, and therefore they reveal many a secret. The Gaki can offer spiritual healing unlike any other clan existing in these nights, and so the Gaki become a form of counsellor, psychologically speaking. Tell me, Dr. Freud, what are you thinking? What is your problem? What ails you? How is it that you feel about your sire? The Gaki receive this information almost too easily. And, again, they have no disciplines with which to assist them in this. They do not have the presence to coax this information out. They do not have the dominate to do it with, uh, well, callousness at all. They merely ask, and through the bonds of trust they have built over centuries, they gain this information. My predictions for the Gaki in the long term are, well, if they pursue this action against the Bruja, the Camarilla may well start taking increased actions in Asia, which I would find very interesting, to say the least. But not only that, I fear that they may go the route of the Salubri. After all, were the Salubri not also great counsellors on the mind, body, and soul? Were they not also meditative? Maybe these Gaki in the 4th century learned these meditative arts from the... Uh, actions of Sorlot, or Zaolat the Liar, and his Wu Zhao bloodline. And we all know what happened to the Salubri, don't we? Believe me, there are many up-and-coming bloodlines in the East that would very much fancy the position that the Gaki have. The Gaki could do well to insinuate themselves into the courts of the Camarilla, or indeed the Sabbat, we have much to learn of controlling our beasts, and they would be a great boon to us, of that I have no doubt. But a foreigner is not to be trusted, and, hmm, I am just waiting now, waiting for the time when the Chonyo Guixin, or perhaps those Yang Shi, decide they have tired completely of these actions of the Gaki, that maybe the Hungry Ghosts know a bit too much. Maybe they're absorbing a bit too much more than just excess vitae. Maybe they've just rammed their heads full of information to such a degree they're too dangerous to keep around. Long term, I think the Gaki have dangerous times ahead unless they form some new allies. The question is, which side of the fence will they fall on if they decide to come west? Camarilla or Sabat? I suppose time will tell.